Look at that gorgeous jumping spider. Hi, baby. <laughs> I actually really love spiders. I let them live inside my house and inside the greenhouse. The jumping spiders are my favorite. They're so cute. Watch out. Watch out, maybe. Watch out. There we go. So yesterday morning, I don't really know what brought it on exactly. I have some suspicions based on what I did throughout the week, but my back, my lower back, started having spasms and it's coming on pretty randomly, but it's making it so, like my legs try to give out. So I've been walking around with, I put it down, I should have it near me. I'm walking around with this thing. This is actually one of the like support posts for my electric netting, but I've been using this to sort of catch myself if those, if and when those spasms come on. And it just got me to thinking. Um, I knew I wanted to talk about it and show kind of what homesteaders and farmers have to do no matter what, whether they're sick or injured or what have you. But also I wanted to address something that I, a suggestion that I get pretty often when I talk about my bad elbow. Um, a few years ago I injured my elbow and every once in a while it acts up, especially this time of year when I start using my arm a lot. And a lot of people always come into the comments suggesting that I either go carnivore or keto as a means of like lessening the inflammation and the pain that I have in my elbow. And while I know that there are foods out there that have been studied and shown to be inflammatory, I don't necessarily believe in completely cutting out whole food groups. Oh, I don't know if you saw that. One of my spiders hitched a ride on me on the way over. some dino kale in. I had started some kale from seed in this bed and I see a little bit of it coming up, but the kale that I started in the greenhouse, I actually started this even later than the kale that I started here. This looks much better. So I'm just transplanting these over here to fill this space out. One of the issues that we deal with in this outdoor space here is birds. Birds really like to eat the tender seedlings, the real small ones. They might give some of these little seedlings a taste, but I don't know, hopefully not. We're gonna have to see. This is pretty normal for me this time of year. I'll start some things and then the birds will eat them and then I'll start more things and maybe the birds will eat them. And then eventually it gets to where there's a lot of exciting things happening in the world and the birds generally leave my garden alone. So my family and I, we're blessed to have a relatively uninteresting health history. We haven't had a lot of major things happen. There just hasn't been anything remarkable to speak of or to comment on. Um, outside of maybe some minor physical injuries, we've had a pretty good run of things so far. And it's just, it's kind of one of those things where if it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so really that's the perspective that we're coming from. I understand that there are some people that really need or that really benefit from those types of diets because of some other underlying health condition. Actually, it was about this time last year that I had some blood work drawn because I was having some breathing issues. I figured that it was because I had just moved around a whole bunch of moldy hay, but I wanted to check and make sure it had been several years since my last child that I had any kind of blood work drawn. And so I figured it would probably be a good idea. So I had that done and truthfully, I did expect to see something. I expected to see maybe high blood sugar or a higher than usual blood pressure or something, elevated levels of cholesterol or something. Something where someone was gonna tell me to lose weight, right? But that didn't happen. Everything came back beautiful. I have been given a couple supplements for when I am exposed to things like mold but changing the diet isn't really gonna do anything for that. That kind of a thing is environmental. So there's a lot of things that I think that we sort of as a society neglect to acknowledge because they're harder to control. The way that we eat is very personal and very intimate. And I think everybody should choose to eat what they feel comfortable eating but it's only a piece of the puzzle of the grand scheme. So last year with my lungs, that was clearly environmental. Would it have hurt me to eat a little bit better that week? Probably not, very probably not. 
But really what my body needed at that time wasn't a change in the way I was eating. It needed a change in the environment that I was in. It was toxic for me to be breathing in that mold. So I needed to get the mold out of the barn and everything got better after that. Most of the stuff that we've dealt with as far as health related things has been more like physical, physical injuries. And last year went, no, was it last year? I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago. I was cleaning out the greenhouse after the growing season. I had let kind of a lot of weeds and stuff pile up around the edges and I wanted it to look nice. And I, I worked really hard with less than ideal tools to do what I could by hand to free all those weeds from around the greenhouse. My greenhouse is pretty big. It's 25 feet wide and 40 feet long. And I did it all by hand over the course of a week while I was doing other things. I mean, I was still beekeeping. I still am beekeeping, but at the time I was dealing with heavy honey boxes and I was still hand milking, just a, a lot of stuff. And it caused um, a severe strain in this elbow. And I went to the chiropractor and he did some kinesiology tape and different things and gave me different exercises to do and encouraged me to milk smarter, not harder. You know how um, back in the day it used to be a lot more common when people really started using computers a lot more frequently? Carpal tunnel was a lot more common. And that is essentially what I was dealing with. Not up here in my wrist, but in my elbow. It's tennis elbow and, it, and that is a result of overuse. So that's just another example of something where I had some inflammation clearly, but it also had a very clear reason for happening and a very clear way to solve the problem without having to make major dietary restrictions part of that process. So I do still deal with a little bit of elbow pain. Part of it is I don't have an amazing system for milking my goats when I milk them by hand. So the action of getting the milk out of the goat, maybe I'm milking this way and I should be keeping my wrist more straight because it's more ergonomic for my arm. If it means I'm less effective at milking, I'm a lot less likely to do it. I'm just being honest, but that means that I hurt my elbow. So you will see me dealing with the occasional pain here and there, but I think that's kind of normal for how active our lifestyle is. So what happened with my back? I have had pretty constant back issues ever since I was pregnant with my last child. He stayed on one side of my uterus from 16 weeks until he was born. He was born after, after 40 weeks. And during that pregnancy, it really shifted my hips. One of my hips tilts forward where the other one is more straight. I do go to a chiropractor every two weeks and we do what we can to manage that. But that's another one of those things where there's a physical thing wrong inside my body that a diet just, it would not, it wouldn't help. Changing my diet to carnivore is not going to realign my hip. Most of the time, my hip doesn't cause any problems. I know how to move with it. I am, you know, going to the chiropractor really often and getting things adjusted. But what I did this past week was I had to move 45 bales of hay off of our trailer and get it under cover because rain was coming. And I moved all 45 bales in one go. Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll see the rain coming on the forecast and I will move like 12 bales one day, 15 bales the next day and then the rest of them on the third day and kind of break it up. I did not do that this day and I'm guessing that that's where my back pain came from so I have to take it easy. It's so hard to get out of my head what I would like to say without also like negating somebody else's experience. I don't want to do that. I'm not trying to sit here and tell anyone that these types of diets or ways of eating don't work because they do for some people. Um, as I said in the beginning, this is just my experience. And we have, we have done these types of diets in the past and I have lost weight on them and I have felt good on them, but not as good as I would have expected to feel. Um, physically, I felt good, I had a lot of energy but mentally, it just wasn't a good place for me to be. Um, it was a situation where that's what my whole life was based on. That's what my whole life revolved around was my way of eating. And in a sense, that's sort of where we're at right now, but in a completely different way. 
I felt like when we were worried about how many carbs we were taking in every day and and writing things down on a on a calculator we were stressing out about stuff that ultimately didn't bring any value to our lives and that's not the case for what we're doing now. There's nothing but value added to our lives and we're able to eat without restrictions, which feels really good. Does that mean we never get sick? No. Does that mean we never have the occasional ache and pain? No. All of that means that we're human and we're allowed to be sick sometimes. We're allowed to move wrong and have pain sometimes. And we only have one life. And I would like to do things that bring enjoyment in this one life that we have. And sometimes that means getting a Pepsi on a Friday. So far that hasn't caused any major issue. It brings me joy, I look forward to it. And so we do it. There's so much more to health than physical health. And this is something that I really started to understand um, exactly four years ago, just about. It was when COVID, when COVID happened, when I couldn't get exactly what I wanted out of the grocery store. We had only been here at this farm for three months. I had seven chickens and a little bit of a garden going on, but really nothing like we have right now. And so it was scary. I could not get the things that I felt like I needed in order to sustain our family because stuff just wasn't there the shelves were all picked over and so I could either visit a whole bunch of stores and stress out about eating this very specific way that I felt like I needed to eat in order to be happy or I could let that go um, eat whatever was available to me nurture my mental health and that proved to be much more fruitful than any kind of fad diet that I was on and as I said this is speaking from personal experience I understand that everybody has different experiences with these kinds of things and that's why it's so personal it's never one size fits all and I think there's a lot of beauty in that the reason that I'm not going to go keto or carnivore or vegan or whatever the reason I'm not going to cut out any one food group to give something like that up for me in what we're doing here would be to give up something that is a very real and active part of my life. We have meat animals here, I have dairy animals here, I have great big gardens and I get a lot of joy and fulfillment out of growing our own food, and preserving our own food and then preparing our own food. It's so much bigger than what it is on the plate and what it means to have done it all myself right here on our land. I know that is not everybody's reality, so it's so hard to try to express that and get it to be understood, but it's because taking those parts out of my diet would mean taking those parts out of my life. That would be bigger than something physical. There would be like a mental health aspect to that that could be, probably would be a downward spiral to me. So unless there's something that pops up that makes it so it's obvious that I need to make a change, I'm not gonna do it just because. It's it's gonna take out a part of me that I'm honestly not willing to give up, especially without good reason. And the occasional ache and pain, that can just be part of life. It's not a good enough reason for me. I just need to be smarter, move better, take breaks as needed, do things like this, foster my mental health, because I find that when my mental health is at its premium, my physical health usually follows suit. There's something about having a positive mindset that really does align everything else. I mean, obviously within reason, but it's definitely a good jumping off point. I had a whole bunch of peas along the trellis here. The birds ate them. I had some kohlrabi on the other side of the trellis. I think the birds ate them. Hopefully they leave these bigger plants alone. I've seen a lot of earthworms come out of the soil, which is encouraging. I feel like I'm seeing so many more of those this year than I have in years past. Must be doing a good job building soil over here, which is which feels good. This particular bed, these U-shaped beds, these were put in in 2020. And usually it takes a good three years to be able to build uh, good soil in any kind of planting space. And this is still, this is still a work in progress, that's for sure. But those earthworms are doing their job helping out. See, look at them all. There's one here and there. Come 
as a dairy goat owner, one of the best decisions that I have made is to leave babies on mamas and do a kid share because there are absolutely times when I can't get out and milk for whatever reason or I can't milk to the capacity that they would really need if they didn't have babies on them to drain them. I normally have quite a big milker that I will tote around and, and milk the girls out with, but I don't I don't really feel like I have the capacity today to haul that around and then do the back and forth that it takes to clean it. So the babies are on mamas, except for Tempest here. She has one of her babies I pulled so that I could train him to be a bottle baby. It's this, it's this leg that's bothering me. So oh, I gotta lift it up with my hand there. And she does have one baby on her right now, but that one baby does appear to be favoring one side. So I do wanna make sure that if any of the mamas look like they're needing a little bit of attention on one side or the other or both, that I give them that attention by hand. But after scanning Utter today, it looks like Tempest is the only one that could use a little bit of relief on this, on this one side. Other than that though, the babies can do the milking chore for me today, which really does help give me some room to rest. A few people have assumed that because I have a milker, that my husband could come out and milk. And I think he could try. Um, goats are such creatures of habit that sometimes they can even be picky with who handles them. And I sold some goats recently. It was Mayhem and Boba, Tallulah and Holly. And Mayhem and Boba left in milk. And it was two farmers, a man and a woman. And the woman has no problem or had no problem milking Mayhem. But Mayhem was not allowing the man to handle her. And I said, you know what? I'm actually not surprised because my husband, he might scratch a goat head two times a year. Like he's, he loves this lifestyle. He loves the farm. He loves the goats and their milk, but he's not hands on with them. So I don't know how well that would work out. I think instead of, if I really needed it, instead of having my husband do the milking chore, I would call my friend Megan because she could wrestle a goat and get them milked whether they wanted to or not. Not that my husband is not able to wrestle a goat. He could, but Megan would have fun doing it. <laughs> Margie, come here, ma'am. Good girl. Nope. <laughs> what we got off of one side of Tempest. I don't know how much it is, but it's a good amount for having one baby on her still. Do you see how I'm milking right here? I'm actually milking like this with my wrist bent. That's actually a no-no. I know that. I know that when you're typing on a keyboard, you're supposed to have your wrist more uh, curved like this and not like this because you can give yourself carpal tunnel. It's just how Margie milks out easiest. So that's what I do. I, mean, I could turn my wrist like this maybe. It's just, it feels unnatural to me and it's not as effective, so that's what I do. Sorry, Dr. Crow. What the heck is happening today? What the heck is happening today? Hmm? Just crusty. Just crusty. Nope. Also on the note of things like the carnivore and keto diet and why I'm personally probably not going to take that route ever unless I really, really need to is my, my mother has autoimmune disease, several different types. Polymyositis is one of, one of them. And then there's just a whole slew of other issues that she's dealing with. Raynaud's, it's, it's a whole host of different things. And so personally, even when I'm sick, and don't feel great. I don't like to take any kind of medication. I don't even necessarily like to do herbal things because in my mind, if I can let my immune system do what my immune system is designed to do, 
then it's not going to forget how to do that and it's not going to go haywire obviously that's not a guarantee but i try to avoid doing things that my body isn't already set up to do or doing things to replace the immune system. I really, I, I would like to do things that support the immune system and yeah, diet can be part of that. But in saying that, there are so many different antioxidants and vitamins and things in fruits and vegetables and like things with carbs that I just, I don't think it would be smart for me to miss out on those things, but also it wouldn't be smart for me to kind of train my body to do something that it wasn't designed to do as, as if I personally know better. Like if my body already is good at pushing out insulin when it needs to, why would I, why would I punish it? It's pretty good at doing the job that it does and so I don't wanna, I don't wanna meddle. I don't wanna mess with it. I'll just let it do its thing. I saw something recently too. There was a study done with 800 healthy people, which is kind of unusual. They usually don't include healthy people in studies. Usually it's sick people in studies, but it had 800 healthy people and it tracked their blood sugar when they ate different things. And they found that the blood pressure spikes from eating, eating certain different foods was vastly different in the different healthy bodies. And they actually traced it back to a certain bacteria that was present in the gut, and I thought that was really interesting. And there's a lot of really great fermented foods that would help support the internal microbiome, and I wouldn't want to give those up either, like kefir. Kefir is the most bacteria-rich fermented food out there. And I would hate to deny myself of that just because it's too many carbs. You know what I mean? It's, it's deeper than that. Good girl. Atta girl. No. Talia has an injured teeth that I want to make sure I'm keeping a close eye on. I might milk her out a little bit too. I think she's not letting them nurse on, on this side as often. Oh, it looks worlds better than it did. She's got a little bit of scar tissue in there. It's a little harder than the other teeth. So the babies really might be favoring this side and that's why there's milk on that side, but it, it milks out nice. Now she does have freckles. If you see these black spots, don't worry about that. She's okay. But, uh, that looks so much better than it did. It's like I sprayed you with milk already. <laughs> How long has that been there? I'm sorry. You did it already. You were the first to come up. I know you hate this. I'm sorry. just enough milk to feed the bottle babies for a day, which is all I really need to worry about. just running for me a couple days ago. Look at him now. <laughs> the power of the bottle. Okay, who's going first? Okay, Winnie ran away, so I'm doing cold first. Sorry, Win. Sorry, Win. So yeah, I don't have problems with the keto diet or the carnivore diet or veganism or vegetarianism. Different diets work for different bodies for different reasons. I just wanna give our perspective on that. We do get questions on that quite a lot. I know that you'll see a lot of people in the homesteading community on different diets for different reasons and they're all valid. Whatever works for them, you know? Winnie keeps running into you, sorry. 
but those are the reasons that I just, I am not considering it at this point. I don't feel like I have a need to consider it at this point. I know a lot of people feel like they want a smaller body. I'm not one of those people. It was in about 2020 where I just decided, hey, it's not worth the mental, no Winnie. She's gonna knock you over. It's not worth the mental. <laughs> Come here, Win. Come over here. Come here, Winnie. Winnie. So yeah, it was about in 2020 when I was like, okay, I can't get the types of foods that I'm used to getting and we're just gonna get what we can and work with what we can and let me just see what I can eat and where my body lands. And I have been the same size for probably about two and a half years. I'm comfortable with my size. I can move around really well. My husband is fine with my size. That's one of the things that I get somewhat, like more frequently than I would like to, because it's strange that people think that this should be a thing, but some people think that my size should be bothering my husband. It doesn't. <laughs> we're both really happy and content with where we're at and don't find a need to make any changes. Some of the sickest people that I know are some of the thinnest people I know. And so bodies can be different sizes. As I mentioned, I had blood work last year and it showed nothing wrong. And so I'm gonna count my blessings for that. If that changes, I'll make some changes, but it likely won't involve cutting out whole food groups. I, I'll do something, but probably nothing that extreme, like I said, unless I absolutely need to. Look at this little girl, eating like a champ. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm always open to constructive criticism and discussion as long as we are kind to each other. I do my best to answer all of the comments that I can. So I'll see you down there.